Assalamu alaikum i dobro pojelovit na moj kanal. My legal birth name is Language Simp and I am a hyper polyglot giga chat alpha male who is very attractive to every woman and man on the planet. As you should know by now, I am a seasoned language learner who's been very active in the community for many years. And during this time, I've witnessed a lot of monolingual betas learn tons of languages and become successful polyglot chads. But I've also watched other language learners make dumb mistakes and fail horribly. So, as everyone's planning their 2023 New Year's language learning resolutions, I decided to share with you guys the top five major mistakes that I see language learners make so that you can avoid them in 2023. So without further Without further ado, let's get down to business. Number one, learning 30 languages at once. Okay, maybe 30 languages is a bit of an exaggeration, but I've unironically seen tons of people, specifically on Discord and Twitter, running around saying that they're learning five, 10, or even 15 languages at the same time. And let me be the first to tell you that not even Kaufman himself could pull this off. I always ask them what their goal is with learning so many languages, and this is where the problem truly starts. If they say they're just learning greetings in 15 languages to Shalma shock immigrants in their city or something, that's chill and they get a pass. But nine times out of 10, they tell me that they want to get fluent in each of them and they genuinely believe they're a magical deity who will actually succeed. But you really know how much time it takes to learn one language? 30 seconds, five hours, two weeks, nine. Typically it takes multiple years. The only way you'll succeed studying 10 to 15 languages at a time is if you abandon your family, don't sleep, and spend every minute of your life in the Algerian desert with an iPhone hard locked to only run Luo Dingo. If you're brand new to the hobby, please, for the love of God, pick one language, make it your baby, and then you can ditch it in nine months. I too feel like a kid in a candy store with all the amazing lingos to pick and choose from, but you must have discipline. However, if you're experienced and have learned languages for years, you probably can gauge for yourself how many you can handle at once. Number two, learning Japanese to watch anime. Ah, uh, where do I begin with this one? First of all, the Japanese learning community is hilarious. There's so much drama and just batshit insane stuff all the time. My favorite example is this prison inmate who went absolutely bonkers learning kanji in a cell. I've never seen such a dedicated group of people simp for a language like people simp for Japanese. And I've noticed a unique phenomenon where a lot of Japanese learn learners base their entire personality on the fact that they study Japanese in order to watch anime without subtitles. Like, I don't even ask Japanese learners why they study it anymore, I just know the response. The problem isn't with the language itself, it's more with the fact that there are so many good reasons to learn Japanese that have nothing to do with cuddling body pillows and being a weeb. Japan is crazy, they've got six cities, innovative technology, gorgeous scenery, mid food, and interesting history. Not everyone in Japan speaks like they're fighting an alien in Dragon Ball Z, so to avoid people thinking you're about to kill them, Maybe consider consuming some other forms of Japanese content, something normal, like their game shows, for example. But in general, the mistake is that people learn a language for a very one-dimensional reason, which might not have enough longevity or might not bring enough emotion to really get them fluent. Okay, yeah, I originally started learning Mexican to watch telenovelas, but then I discovered that other cool things exist like Chipotle, Bad Bunny, and Cuba. Number three, caring too much about your accent. If you're in an Uber speaking with the driver and you notice they have a foreign accent in your native language, do you start screaming, push them out of the car and steal the vehicle? Or do you think to yourself, Oh wow, this foreigner learned my language and is speaking it to me. That's very impressive. If you're a monolingual beta, maybe you do commit a felony in this situation, but if you're a normal person, you're probably just impressed and you appreciate their effort. As long as you can understand them and their grammar isn't complete dog water, you're gonna be content having a conversation with them. So why on earth would it be any different when you speak another language and you sound like a dumbass gringo? Todd, you're a middle-class white man from rural North Carolina. Don't be nervous. Mexicans will appreciate your ability to converse verse in their language, even if you sound like an idiot. I personally love trying to sound like a native, and my goal is to eventually become indistinguishable from a native in every lingo I learn. But I don't hold myself back from speaking even when I suck ass at the beginning. I've learned to be proud of the American accent because us gringos are typically too busy building strip malls and hitting Fortnite dances to even think about other cultures. So I'm unique and fun even when I sound like a toddler in my target language. The biggest thing to remember is that when someone laughs at your accent, they aren't laughing at you. They're laughing with you. It is funny when I mispronounce the ein in Arabic. So instead of being a crybaby beta about it, I learned to have fun with it. Number four, not caring about your accent. Now on the other end of the spectrum, you have people who don't care about their accent at all and make no effort to improve it. Again, it's fine if you sound like a gringo when speaking Mexican, but you at least have to try to make an effort. It's hola, not 
Hola, Todd. We've told you a hundred times that the H is silent and you still pronounce it. You're not making that mistake because of your accent. You're making that mistake because you aren't trying to improve. Also, I often see shy people, typically new language learners, hesitate to imitate natives because they find it uncomfortable to do so. For example, a Chinese learner may not want to offend people by trying to sound like a stereotypical Chinese person, but Todd, you're speaking Chinese. Your goal is to sound like you're Chinese. It's not offensive to speak with correct tones and a good accent. Number five, being shy. What is the purpose of learning a language? I'll give you a hint. The purpose of language learning is not to grind Luodingo leagues and impress your Discord kitten with the absurd amount of lingots that you've collected. We've all made that mistake before, but we won't make it again. Chances are, if you're studying a language, you're studying it so that one day you will speak that language fluently. Speak with your mouth! Unless it's ancient Albanian sign language, of course. So why are people nervous to speak the language they're studying? I know it can be frightening speaking to natives, knowing that you're royally fucking up their language every other sentence, but as I said before, it is funny that you can't conjugate verbs correctly. If someone was learning my language, American, and they tried to tell me that they ran and they said I runned instead of I ran, I'm probably gonna laugh, but that's okay. I'll correct them and they won't make that mistake again. The single best thing that has ever happened to me in my entire life is when I finally stopped caring about making mistakes. I improved 10 times faster instantly, and with that being said, if you're not on Discord, you're missing out on the best possible place to practice with natives. I have a server that's linked in the description where you can solicit help from over 10,000 other members, and I'll also add the links to a few incredibly active servers where speakers of almost every language are constantly in voice calls. Even if you're a beginner, just go in there, introduce yourself, and then leave the call the second you feel overwhelmed. At least you'll get to see if that random assortment of words in your head actually means anything. If you enjoyed this video, consider supporting me on Patreon. I create more in-depth language learning tips and tricks videos, and your support allows me to make this my full-time career. Dos vidanya.